Good evening. It is a blessing to see everybody in church tonight. We are going to move right along quickly this evening. We're going to have prayer, a little time of fellowship, and the kids are all going back to their class tonight, and we're going to have uh, something really, really strange in here. So get ready. Uh, get ready. All right. Let's, uh, let's remember in prayer those that are sick. Uh, Aniston is sick. I had to go get her at school today. Seems like there's something going through the kids again, some kind of little virus. Hope it's just 24 hours or 12 hours would even be better. I uh, want to pray for her and others that are that are sick, not able to get out. And then we want to pray for, uh, continue to pray for Miss uh, Catherine Parker, uh, that the Lord will heal her up. She is able to walk a little bit now. Hopefully she'll be able to be back at church uh, this weekend and uh, ask the Lord to bless them and others that need our prayers tonight. Uh, and if you've got something you want us to pray about tonight, just let me you know, uplifted hand, and we're going we're gonna to pray. Let's pray for winter camp. If you've not signed up, sheets right here tonight. The list is growing. It's looking good. Uh, a bunch of folks from over in Tennessee is coming with us. Uh, I don't feel kids, some of their kids are coming with us because they're real close there. And then uh, uh, a bunch of kids from over in Knoxville are coming to meet us over there. Brother Mike Rice is bringing up a gang from down in Gastonia. So we are really, really, really looking forward to winter camp. It's always it's always fun. And it's, it's short. I mean, on two nights. Um uh, we've never had beds at winter camp everywhere we went. We had to, had to bunk up in a gym or in a floor somewhere. So bring a sleeping bag or an air mattress uh, or something like that. Or it's like camping out for two nights. Ain't going to kill you. Uh, we're really looking forward to that. Can't wait. Looking for a great time in the Lord. Amen. Actually, sleeping on the floor is good for your back, they say. The problem is getting up. <laughs> Amen. See that? The Lord bore witness to that right there. Yeah. All right. Uh, I, somebody must have cast a demon out because it got them. All right. Let's uh, don't forget to pray for winter camp. Let's pray for our Christmas plays, plural. That'll, both of them will be on the 22nd. That'll be on Sunday evening, the 22nd. The kids are having a real special play. And then uh, the, uh, the teenagers, adult plate will be that night also and I want you to start inviting your family and friends to, to our Christmas play you you can get people to come to a Christmas play you really can because they'll say I can sneak in the lights will be low and I ain't gonna have no preaching I'll just ease in and ease out and clear my conscience and I'll do God a favor for Christmas that's the way people think you know uh, so you can get them to come for a Christmas play that won't come hardly no other time only time is easier in Christmas is Easter, and I don't know what Christmas isn't easier. Uh, so take advantage of it and use this time for the Lord. Then uh, uh, next week, one week from tonight, I've already heard people say, I can't wait till next Wednesday night. We're going to the steakhouse. All you can eat steak. And I know they're going to go in the hole on some of us fellas uh, for $10. Ain't that right, brother? He's ready. Hey, Amen. Uh, you know, piece of meat that big costs you nine dollars in the store, not even cooked. And they'll have they got those big yeast rolls. They got those cinnamon rolls right out of the oven, about that big. Like they're like them. Uh, we call them things I like real good. Uh, them cinnabons, them things like that. And they're uh, they got ice cream, and they'll have corn and ham and uh, rice and gravy and green beans and salad. And it's ten dollars. Tax, drink, tip. No, that don't count tip. Everything. We do ask you to leave a tip though for good, for real, because you got three girls just working, just just doing for us. So at least three, maybe four. So please um, 
bring a tip, but 10 bucks, can't beat it. You couldn't go to the store and buy that food and fix it for one person for $10. No way. Buy drinks and everything. So uh, let's look forward to that and the fellowship. If we were, if we was going over there and eating bull cra- uh, clams, I'd still go just for the fellowship. And I don't like clams. I ain't crazy over clams. I ain't crazy over scallops, uh, you know, I, stuff like that. I, it's all, I can eat it, but uh, I ain't crazy over crab legs. Too much work. Uh, I, it's something we can eat, amen. But let's all uh, plan on that and enjoy the Lord next Wednesday night for our annual Christmas supper. And you, we do want visitors. They don't have to come to our church. Somebody at work, maybe somebody say, hey, meet us at the steakhouse at 8 or 7.45. Uh, Wednesday night and come and eat with us. Okay, all right. Let's let's all stand and um, go to the Lord in prayer, and then right after this, we'll have just a little time of fellowship and have our offering, and then the kids will be uh, uh, dismissed for class. All right, uh, let's pray. Our heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all you've done for us. We sure do thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time of year when it's, it's cold and uh, it, it's Christmas and people are getting excited about it and everything. Lord, I thank you, God, for our church and what it stands for and help it stand for what's right in these last days and do the will of God. I pray in Jesus' name, Father, that you would forgive us of everything we've done wrong, every, everything we've committed against you, sin, Lord, in any way. Please forgive us. Lord, I pray that you'd bless every single person here tonight. Whatever the need is, I, I pray you'd meet that need in every heart. I don't know what it is, Lord, but I pray you'd meet it. I ask you, Lord, that you'd uh, get let, get us ready for winter camp. Lord, may the Holy Ghost come and do a work in our hearts. Lord, I pray that, that you'd bless uh, the Christmas plays coming up on the 22nd. I pray that you'd bless, Lord, our our, our work, Lord, and our, our dinner next week. And as the kids prepare for the play and the adults, I pray that you bless them. Have you win our hearts tonight? I pray for all the other churches and pastors, and missionaries and evangelists. God, that you'd meet them. I pray for our country. I pray for our leaders, uh, those in, in our president, Congress, Senate, and, and uh, our elected leaders, and sheriffs, and policemen, and school teachers. And God, I pray for everyone, Lord, that you'd help them live for you and serve you. Do what ought to be done in our life, Lord. Help us to do right. God, I pray the Holy Ghost to come upon us and use us for your glory. Do what ought to be done in every life. Bless this service tonight. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Remain standing. Everybody be friendly in the Lord there. Let's fellowship a little bit. Take your time there and go around our place.
ushers, come on. Kids, you can go. Ushers, come on. Amen. Hallelujah. They're going to get in some good practice back there tonight. Hallelujah. Let's all give tonight. Honor the Lord, and he'll bless you for it. Everybody give. Everybody honor the Lord tonight. Amen. Yes, everybody honor the Lord tonight. If you didn't get your offering in Sunday, good time to do it tonight. All right? All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for being good to us. Pray that you would bless this offering tonight. Bless the kids and everybody as they work on the play tonight, Lord. May the Holy Spirit of God uh, help them, Lord, and help them to learn their parts and let it be real to them, Lord. It can be real to the people, and we can be a great testimony for the Lord Jesus Christ at our Christmas play. Bless this uh, offering tonight. Multiply it and use it for your glory and give us wisdom. Bless the rest of the service in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, let's all settle down now. Everybody settle down, get your seats, get your Bibles. We'll start out in the Bible tonight for a little while. Little while. Get your Bibles out, you're going to need them. Everybody, get your Bibles out now. Amen. Okay. Been down just one hair on this, Dylan. Just a hair. Uh, let's start tonight by um, turning to John chapter 4. And um, I announced that I was going to be doing some, uh, some things in here on Wednesday night to help you with your education spiritually. And uh, that's what we're going to do tonight. That is my intention uh, to have us know the truth and live by it, love it, learn it, live it. That's what my pastor said. Learn it, love it, live it. We'll start in John chapter 4 tonight. Um, I'm going to read some scriptures, and then I'm going I'm to show you some things uh, tonight to, to, to help you to see what I'm trying to say. John chapter 4, look at verse 24. John chapter 4 and verse 24. Jesus told the woman at the well this, and he said, God is a, a particular spirit, capital S. The King James Bible's got it right. The new modern versions say God is spirit. That's not true. God is not spirit. He is a spirit. And a lot of stuff spirit that ain't God. You understand? God is a particular spirit. You just run into stuff like that over and over and over and over. The Lord's showing you you've got the right book here. God is a spirit. And look here. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit, that's a little s, and in truth. So it is impossible to worship God correctly without the spirit, and it is impossible to worship God correctly without the truth. We all see it all the time. You see it, there's, there's a big old, big old churches and they got plenty of truth, and dead is four o'clock. Everybody just sits there, and the guy, what the guy's saying is true, got truth, no spirit. And then you got others that's got all kinds of spirit. I say tonight. Now, um, as I said the other night when I when I played y'all that tape of that guy preaching, I'm not trying to be ugly. I'm not being rude. If you think that I'm one of these preachers that just puts everybody, I'm, I do what I do because it comes natural to me. But, but, whatever a preacher does or a church does has to be in the guidelines of the Word of God. Has to be. And as soon as it gets outside the guidelines of this book, then you're off base. Now, I, I, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say it till I'm blue in the face because 
We're in the minority nowadays. People believe the Bible. And I'm going to say it till I'm blue in the face. Once you abandon your authority, once you come to the point where you say, man, the Bible, it's okay right here and there and everything, but we can't completely go by every... Once you come to that, then you're out here on your own and your experience becomes what you believe. Well, I believe it. Why? Because I know what I felt that night. How many thousands of people? I know what I've seen. Now look, you know how I am. I don't care what you've seen or what you felt. What this is, says is right. And what we do against it's wrong. Me, you, or anybody else. If I'm against it, I'm wrong. If you, if I preach something wrong, you're, you're not. I know a lot of people say, well, Brother Danny is really off on that, but I didn't want to be a smart aleck and rebuke him. Well, you, you don't have to rebuke me, but I'll tell you what you can do. You can come to me and say, look, Brother Danny, I, I, I don't know. What you said the other night, I might have a, can you help me understand? It, it's not a wrong question, preacher. There ain't nothing wrong with that. If you do it in the right spirit and everything, uh, he, he may have, I may have to clarify <laughs> sometimes what I say. Uh, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. Don't, don't ever be afraid uh, to ask me about something I believe or something like that. Or you say, well, I've always wondered why you preach it. Ask me. I ain't going to bite your head off. Uh, uh, it, it's not going to insult me or nothing like that. So, so do it. Now, Real Bible worship is spirit and truth. Now, let's go back to Isaiah chapter 8, back in the Old Testament. Go get two or three more verses here before we go uh, on our little journey tonight. Isaiah chapter number 8. Um, if you did not get the message on uh, the Word of God's Not Bound a couple of Sunday nights ago, it is on YouTube now. Just put my name in, Danny Castle, Word of God's Not Bound. It's, it's in there, on there. Uh, 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 not all great, but most of it was. Uh, Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 20. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there, because there is no light in them. Now, I'm not going to ask you to turn to these verses, but I am just going to give them to you real fast. What is real Bible worship and real church? Uh, somebody came up with a saying uh, one time and they said, attend the church of your choice. And that sounds good and everything, but really that's not exactly right. You better attend a church where the Bible is preached and where God is. I even you have to drive a good ways to get to it. I'm, I'm serious. I'm not saying it because I'm a preacher. I'd drive a long ways on Sunday if I had to, if I had to, thank God around here, we don't have to. But if I had to, I'd drive a long ways to hear the preaching of the Bible. I would. Um, and I know people who say, well, they worship this way at that church and they worship another way at that church. And just really, it's just however you, you worship God according to the dictates of your heart. <laughs> you ever heard that? Uh, that's not true either. Uh, you worship God according to the scripture and not against the scripture. Now, in the Bible, people shouted when they worshiped God. They did. 1 Samuel 10, 24. Ezra 3, 11. Ezra 12, 13. When they brought up the ark of God, people shouted, Woo! Hallelujah! Praise God! They shouted a laugh of joy. So when a person is sincerely shouting for God, they are within scriptural bound. In the New Testament, in the New Testament, in, in Acts chapter number 3, uh, the man uh, the man that got healed, he went walking and leaping and praising God. Just jumping up and down and saying, Woo! Hallelujah! Like that. You're on scriptural ground. You are on scriptural ground to raise your hands. All the way through the Bible, people raise their hands and they clap their hands. I don't think they did it in applause like we do now in some churches down in Hollywood. Like, you know, it was like... You know, like that, you know. Uh, that's my feeling. I can't prove it. But it said, Psalm 47, 1 said, Oh, clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. So you're on scriptural ground. First Timothy 2, 8 said, When men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands. Some people think, oh, you're some kind of weird fanatic. No, no, you're not. No, you're not. You, If you lift up your hands and say, Lord, I love you, I'll, I love it. You know, when I'm preaching sometimes, 
and, and, and I see a hand go up over here, and I see another one go up over That's like saying, sick them to a coon dog, brother. That's like, you know, that's just like, that's just agging it on, saying, let her rip, preacher. I mean, uh, uh, if, you, if you hate your preacher, best thing to do is shout him, shout it for him every Sunday morning. He'll preach yourself to death and have a heart attack, and he can get you another. But uh, uh, you, you, can, you can raise your hand and be on scriptural ground. Uh, don't fake it. Don't do it to be seen. Just once in a while say, hallelujah, Lord. Mean it from your heart. I have seen people that you just can't help but wonder if it's fake. And I can't. you're not supposed to judge people's motive, and I try not to, but have you ever seen them just all of a sudden? That's weird looking to me. And this is really weird. That's really weird. Nobody does that at ball games. When your team makes a touchdown, you don't do it like this. You don't do that with joy. Joy don't produce that. It's getting quiet already in here. I'm not trying to be ugly. I'm trying to teach you the difference. The difference. Now, I don't guess. I mean, you're saying, Lord, I want to receive something you, but, but I don't know. Some of that stuff. I'm going to show you some stuff tonight that illustrates what I'm saying. Let's show, let's, um, and I'll tell you where they got it. In Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit came down, the disciples, apostles, spoke in other languages, the 11. It does not say the whole 120 spoke in tongues. You have to be careful about that, too. I'm not saying some of them did. I'm just saying it's when it says they, 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 they. Read Acts chapter 1, chapter 2. The apostles went out. And they spoke in other languages, and all them people could understand what they were saying. I tell you what was really strange. Peter jumped up and just preached, probably in his language, and they all understood in their language. That was really wild. People from all over the nations of the world, and the Holy Spirit was translating that midair between Peter's mouth and their ears. Buddy, that's something else right there. That is something else. Now, um, so that happened. That happened, and we'll study on, on the gift of tongues, and the gift of healing, and the gift of signs and miracles um, at another time. Uh, definitely, definitely we have before, and we will again. And, and in the Bible, when those disciples had the Holy Spirit come on them, the Bible said people mocked, saying these men are full of new wine. They said they're just drunk. Now that has led to an extreme, Extremely amount of confusion. What, what they were saying, they said mocking. These men are full of new wine. They come out saying, in all kinds of different languages, and they said, oh, they're drunk. And, but I don't think, even though there's similarities between the, I got a whole message on that. I got a whole message on uh, be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. And there are a lot of similarities between being filled with alcohol spirit and being filled with the Holy Spirit. Not to sound disrespectful or anything. Sometimes it's similar. Like somebody who's drunk laughs and cries a lot. Somebody who's filled with the Spirit laughs and cries a lot. They're tender hearted. Just a whole bunch of illustrations like that. Somebody who's drunk, they'll give away every dime they've got. Somebody who's filled with the Spirit, give away every dime they've got. There's a bunch of comparison. But I don't believe, I do not believe, you're not going to convince me that the apostles were out there saying, Repent, you must have fell in hell. I don't believe that's doing that. You know, <laughs> I don't know how I've never been drunk in my life, but I've seen people act like people act like that. I don't think that's how they're acting. <laughs> Is that how you are when you're drunk? <laughs> how how do you act when you're drunk, brother Jeff? Shame, tell me, ain't you? Uh, I heard Derek throws bust the windows out of the house and everything else. Uh, yeah. uh, but but I don't think they acted like that. I don't think they acted like repent, believe in gospel. Bunch honestly, when the Holy Spirit fills a person, they <laughs> will worship God according to the scripture. Now, we know we're on scripture ground, raising hands, saying amen, shouting, praising the Lord. In your right mind, you're on scriptural ground. 
I'll show you a little bit here tonight. One, one more scripture, Acts 17. And then we'll hurry. We're, this is, I'm never going to get it all in tonight. It'll be two weeks tonight when we finish, uh, if we can. Acts chapter number 17. Now, when these people come here in the book of Acts, and you know they didn't even have a Bible during this time. When this happened in the book of Acts, they didn't even have the Bible. They didn't even have the book of Acts. All they had was the Old Testament, and all of them didn't have a copy of that. But look here what they did. Acts 17, 11. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind. Look at verse 17, 11 and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. Now, make sure my blue mic's on back there, Dylan, and uh, I'm going to show you some video tonight. Start taking the lights down, Brother uh, Drew. And it said them people searched the scriptures daily. Now, what you're fixing to see is a modern-day, what we'd say charismatic movement, and there, a few years ago, just, just turn them all, every one of them now, and then punch these. There we go. One more. It says sconce. There you go. Um, they had a, something what's called the Toronto Blessing. And the Toronto Blessing was, according to them, the Holy Ghost fell and baptized people and they started acting really weird and then it spread all over the country and all around the world and people doing it everywhere. Now, what you're going to see now is an evangelist uh, and, and look at her, her listen to this testimony about this evangelist. Here we go. Make sure. Close your eyes if you're worried. Please. Oh! I, whoa! She's laying in the floor of the pulpit. Down here's the people. Listen to this testimony. I came here about uh, whoo, 11 years ago, and um, I was going to go work at Kmart. Whoa! With my um, <laughs> theological training. I was like, <laughs> I was so tired. And then, whoo, about two weeks ago, I graduated and I decided I'd go to work at Nordstrom's. <laughs> it's true. I thought maybe I could cut my, you know, maybe I could, maybe I could, well, maybe I could comb my hair. I said I had no qualifications, so I don't know who else would hire me. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody feel a, a, a strange sort of a and, and can I be her judge? No. Do I say she's not saved? No. Do I say she don't love the Lord? No. Do I say there's no scripture for worshiping like that? Yes. There is none. Something wrong, our people. Something. How, what kind of a church service? What? How would you feel if you were just sitting there and a woman just laying here giggling about couldn't get a job at Kmart? I mean. <laughs> 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 Listen to people back to back. So he asked Shara to help me write a resume so it'd be spelled correctly. And <laughs> she wouldn't do it. <laughs> She's with something called. That's her. Heidi Baker, you can look her up on the internet. She's all over it. She preaches all over the country. And thousands and thousands of people go to the meeting. And she had that word of faith movement. Uh, Kenneth, K Hagen, Kenneth Copeland, you know, y'all know them guys on TV. And here's the word of faith movement associated with what has come to be known as the Toronto blessing. According to word of faith devotees, Heidi is displaying evidence of the Holy Spirit.
That jumping up and down is strange too. Like where it's like at a, you know, like this. I ain't saying it's wrong. I'm not. I don't, I've never heard anybody doing that in the Bible. David danced before the Lord with all of his might, but I just can't imagine David after killing a giant just doing like this. <laughs> uh, and I'm not trying to be ugly, really. I'm not judging the lady. She's probably a better person than I am. You're, you're missing the whole point if you think I'm like, you're making fun of these people. I'm not. I'm trying to help you see the truth about worship, Bible worship. Residing in her. It Preach it, sister. Now, this guy is very popular. Very popular. John Scott, I think his name. He, I think he's from England. And he's going to, he's in the drunken glory. He's drunk on the Holy Ghost. And this is where they interpret that scripture. Here he goes. He's taking the pulpit. Look at these people. Here's a preacher. To read from, from Luke chapter 1. Some of you think that I don't give readings. See, he's drunk and the Holy Ghost is what he's saying. Some of you think that I don't give readings. That's an odd way of putting it. That's an odd way of putting it. Preacher, give readings. What does that sound like to you? A psychic. Psychics who gives readings. I'm not accusing him of being a, a psychic, but listen to this. Well, I was brought up in the Baptist church. Yeah, more life at the Baptist. Make... Hey, isn't this pulpit good? I, you know, I, I... I've been going through different stages of drunkenness. And the stage I'm at at the moment is slouching. I've gone through the hiccup stage. I've gone through the phase of heckling the preachers. Look at that crowd of people. He said, I've gone through the stage of heckling the preachers. And then he's really going to say something weird here in a second. I got a kiss off George today. I got a kiss off George today. Now, honestly, I think he's joking. I really do. I really mean that. I think he's joking. George is somebody that works there in the sound or something. He said, I got a kiss off George today. And listen to what he says about it. <laughs> <laughs> I told him he needs to get a shave. <laughs> I got a kiss off George today and I told him he needs to shave. And the Holy Ghost? <laughs> oh, okay now, be before we take off, you know, before we go surfing. Before we go surfing, that means... Whatever he's going to do after he reads the scripture, we're going to surf in the Holy Ghost. Let's get the reading done. Luke. Luke. <laughs> Chapter 2. Therefore, do not. Heard from Apostle Paul. Look at this. That was the Apostle Paul they was trying to show there. I don't believe that was Apostle Paul. Uh, look here, there's this church service. From Ephesians chapter 5, verses 17 to 18. The word of faith movement seems to have misconstrued Paul's contrasting of the presence of the Holy Spirit. with. I don't know what that is. I don't know if some weird spirit. I don't know if it's just them acting and thinking they're in the spirit. I don't know what it is. But I know it's not biblical worship. And that's what happens when you abandon your authority. You, your, your Christian life isn't built off your experience. It's built on the Bible. That's the only way we even know there is a Jesus. That's the only way you know he died on the cross is the Bible. Once you abandon the Bible, brother, you're just on your own. Every man does what's right in his own eyes. And, and this is where you wind up. Drunkenness as comparing it to drunkenness. <laughs> You 
say, well, Brother Danny, I've seen people act like that. Not, not like that you ain't. When Hallelujah Howard jumps up and shouts, that's scriptural. He's raising his hands. He's saying amen. He's walking and leaping. He ain't jumping around like a dog. Watch. <laughs> they think Toronto's something. Wait till they come to Boston. It's in Boston. <laughs> Barking like animals. She said the Lord told her to howl. And she said, I can't do that, Lord. And he said, well, if you won't witness for me in here, how are you going to do it out there? And she said, okay, I'll howl for you. And she howls like a wolf. Growling. <laughs> dancing around. Being stuck in states of paralysis. And shaking uncontrollably. This this girl's testimony. And I feel sorry for her. At the beginning of the week, I went through some ministry, which, 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 which God did something to me. He, he, he. Mm. Oh. The pastor of the church, John Arnott, declared that all of this was a manifestation. Ten-year-old child, the child that remembers being abused by an alcoholic father, and I came to a place that was ministering by drunks, and I'm supposed to receive. When discussing this issue, I don't know. That gives my stomach a weird feeling. I mean, you don't even feel right in here right now. You know that? Ain't, ain't that weird? And I and I do that to show you just how far, and this ain't half of it, uh, how far people can get off. What is the liquid glory? Remember my buddy here? Showed him about a year ago, old Brandon. He has he has YouTube broadcast all the time, and he he's a leader of a whole church group, and he he's he's drunk on the liquid glory. He says it ain't vodka, it's godka. And you're going to hear, and he absolutely blasphemes here in just a minute. I don't know if I'll get you to know, it. People say it's vodka. It's not. It's godka. It is. That's Brandon Barthrop, who runs a channel here on YouTube. At this dude is strange. I ain't kidding you. I'm not a Christian anymore. I renounce <clears throat> Christianity. He said, I'm not a Christian anymore. I renounce Christianity. And what he means by that is all the organized churches are just a bunch of sorry, good for nothing people. Here he says it. It's the devil. <laughs> <laughs> They're the worst people I've ever met in my life. Talking about Christian. <laughs> Praise the Holy Spirit. I was just, you know. Uh, uh, turn them lights out back there, Drew. Them far right ones over there, all the way to the, to the left till they click. Them choir lights are on. Um, that's strange. Uh, but anyway, the far right, way over there to the right, there you go. <laughs> we have a training session on that. With these guys. Okay. Uh, here he says that Christians are the devil. You know, these guys saying, yeah, yeah, Christianity renounced being a Christian or repented from being a Christian. <clears throat> and they're Holy Ghost drunks on the glory. You know, they love Jesus, but the God saved me from your people, right? <laughs> he, said they, he said, we love Jesus, but God saved me from your people. I got news for you, buddy. If you don't love his people, you don't love Jesus. You can't love the head and not love the body. The church is the body of Christ. With all of its imperfections, you ought to love the church. Jesus loved the church and gave himself for it. That guy's a nut. I don't mean to be ugly. He's a wrong. That's wicked. Tell him, God, save us from your followers. Holy Spirit. And uh, so I just said it out loud. Honestly, I was a little nervous. And does lines of... Holy Spirit cocaine in his own movement, which was born out of the madness of events like the Florida outpouring and Toronto blessing. What? This is the way they worship. Token that thing. Shh. That's somebody that might have got saved. I don't know if he did or not. His testimony is a little strange. 
That's somebody that says, man, all the hippies are out there having fun. All the people having got drugs and everybody got drugs, man. We ought to be able to get high on Jesus, man. No, 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 no. I don't even like to hear somebody say they're high on Jesus. And I understand some people say that and they got a good heart with it. But I don't like to hear anybody say that. Amen. Listen, that's, it's almost blasphemy to, call, to compare the Lord with drugs. <laughs> yes, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your crystals. The only way we're going to get into heaven. Listen to that. He said the only way we're going to get to heaven is by smoking these crystals. <laughs> it's from smoking. <laughs> Your gemstones. The only way we're going to get to heaven is by smoking your gemstones. He said, we don't need the blood. In your gold dust. Otherwise, we're pretty much screwed. <laughs> we, don't need, we, we don't even need the blood. We got crystals. Yes, we do, too. Yes, we do. Now we're, we're on fighting ground there. Some of the stuff, I, if they do it, that's between them and the Lord. But them's fighting words there. We do need the blood. Without the blood, there's no remission of sin. Without the blood, you can't be forgiven. Without the blood, I don't even know what a Holy Ghost crystal is. You don't smoke the Holy Ghost. You don't inhale the Holy Ghost through your mouth. That's what happens when you abandon your Bible. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> In whom? <laughs> See if you think this is Bible worship. <laughs> make you under conviction? Does that make you want to come to the altar? Does that make you feel guilty over your sins? <laughs> Did you hear him say praise the Holy Spirit a while ago? You don't praise the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit brags on Jesus. The Holy Spirit will point you to Jesus. When the Holy Ghost is in a service, He will magnify the Lord Jesus Christ. That's His job. Jesus said when He comes, He'll not speak of Himself. He shall glorify me. Ed Maccabee and all them old preachers, they said this. They said when the Holy Ghost comes, He'll always do two things. He'll bless the saints and He'll convict the sinners. And if you all you got is a bunch of people hooping and hollering and having a big time and there's no conviction of sin, I wonder about it. The real Holy Ghost not only, not only blesses saints, He convicts of sin. When the Holy Ghost gets moving in a church, you'll start feeling guilty for everything you've done wrong. Just like, think, God, hey man, I need to go to the altar. I need to get right with God. I, that's the way you know the Holy Ghost. All right? Let's watch Him here. <laughs> This pasture. This guy here is very, very, very well known, and he's dressing up like a a wolf in sheep's clothing or a sheep in wolf's clothing. You know, I am often accused of being a wolf in sheep's clothing. What most people don't realize, I'm actually a sheep in wolf's clothing. I'm not sneaky enough to be a wolf in sheep's clothing. If I was, I would play the Christianese part a little bit better. To trick people. <laughs> oy, oy, oy. Remember is him? The bliss is the joy. Oy, oy, oy. You know, Isaiah 35, it says, you will be overtaken by joy. That means taken over by joy. That means possessed by joy. Oy, oy. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oy, oy, oy. oh, my. He does it all the time. Oy, 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 oy. While he's preaching, it's going to be, oy, oy, oy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a weird thing, man. I don't know what that means. Goodness. Thank you, Lord. Uh, sometimes the Lord, the, I used to have a teaching gift. <laughs> I have a, a good gift of uh, getting struck mute in the middle of a service. But one of those few guest speakers who you invite in, and then you may not be able to speak. <laughs> huh. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Lord. Well, today, um, just invite. How would you like to sit and listen to that every Sunday? I ain't great, but Lord have mercy. Sometimes I can say something, maybe. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if I can stand that. 
Thank you, Lord. The, the, we have these little fat friar tuck bartender angels that travel around. With now, did you hear that? Look at this. And we have fat friar tuck bartender angels that travel around with us. I don't know what he's talking about. Little fat friar tuck bartender angels. And everybody don't shout any fusses at them. Say, oh, can't we talk about angels in the church? And I can imagine somebody saying, well, yeah, it'd be great, real angels, but I don't know what you're talking about. They pull on your legs. Wheel in the barrels from heaven. Some healing angels that come. But let me tell you, these little fat fryer tucks, they start yanking on your legs, yanking on your they arms. Start you yanking, better watch. They start yanking on your arms and legs. Little fat fryer angels. Honest to goodness, with all the stuff I've seen from the wee people in Ireland and the pictures of demons and UFOs and all that, I don't know what them little short, fat things are. Like a troll? I don't think it's angels jerking on your arms and legs. You know, we need a little help around here. I think it's okay to talk about the angels in the church, amen? Yeah, it is. If you talk about the real ones. Yoing, yoing, yoing. Help. We need somebody. Help. I mean, if we think we can get, oh, just let's just focus on Jesus. Don't talk about the angel. He said, oh, everybody says, let's just focus on Jesus. Let's focus on Jesus. Don't talk about human beings or animals. Brian, thank you for throwing up the devil. That's the guy that used to be on that corn rock group that's got saved now. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. I don't know. Between him and the Lord. But he's going to these guys' meetings. Horns with your Jesus tattooed hand. They say you're judging if you say anything. You're judging. Well, I'm not going to say anything. And every one of you is sitting there judging in your head right now. It is impossible not to. <laughs> this is the Lord's Supper. You think the apostles did that? Is that honestly? Do you think that's what the apostles did? Nobody thinks that. Peter, James, all them guys. Will they not say that you're mad? That's what the Bible said. Oh, just release this heavy, drunken glory nipple. Slid down and down her leg. This is Todd Bentley. Very, very popular preacher. I'm going to show you just a second to him, then I'm going to turn the lights back on and I'm going to finish for tonight. This fella here, I want you to listen just a little bit of this testimony. Unbelievable. To the floor. I said, God, I've prayed for like a hundred crippled people, not one. He said, that's because I want you to grab that lady's crippled legs and bang them up and down on the platform like a baseball bat. He said, God told him, there's a crippled lady there coming to get healed, and God told him to get her wooden legs and bang them on the platform. So he said, listen. I walked up and I grabbed her legs and I started going, be healed, be healed. I started banging them up and down on the platform. She got healed. And I'm thinking, God. <laughs> she she should have done like Tweety Bird did Sylvester. Grabbed everything and went BAM! Like that, got him. Listen to what he says about this woman being healed. Why is not the power of God moving? He said, because you haven't kicked that woman in the face. He said, why ain't the power of God moving? And the Holy Ghost said, because you ain't kicked that woman in the face. I mean, millions of people follow these people, y'all. Now, to us, we sit in here and think, how ridiculous. You know why you're you know why you're like you are? Because you've been, you've been told the truth. It ain't because of me. It's that book right there. That book will produce rugged individualism. That means it'll make an individual out of you. We're not all clones of each other, but we got that right there in common, brother. We all believe that book. Listen to what he said when God told him to kick this woman in the face. And there's this older lady worshiping right in front of the platform. <laughs> 
And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. The gift of faith came on me. He said, kick her in the face. The Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, kick her in the face. I, I can say there is no scriptural ground for that whatsoever. Holy Spirit's a gentleman. You don't hit people. Kick people in the face. With your biker boot. I inched closer. Look at that guy, you'd think he'd got better sense than that, wouldn't you? I mean, he looks like a nice, young, intelligent man. And I went like this. Bam! And just as my boot made contact with her nose, she fell into the power of God. I'm sure she did. <laughs> just, just as my boot made contact with her nose, she fell under the power of God. That's under the power of your boot, fool. Good night. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. The gift of faith came on me. He said, kick her in the face <laughs> with your biker boot. I inched closer and I went like this. And just as my boot made contact with her nose, she fell into the power of God. And I saw him, and the gift of faith came on me. I said, what do I do, God? And God told me to just run him down. So I jumped up in the air, and I went, bam! And I hit him to the ground, jumped onto him, and got into a full mount. Ground and pound. I jumped on there, and I was in a full mount. And something came over me, and instead of punching I grabbed him by the neck and started choking me. And I said, come out of him, devil! Come out of him, devil! And I was in another meeting one time, and I called out this Chinese gentleman. And all of a sudden, I went running down the aisle, and I, I hit this guy so hard, it drove him back several feet. He hit the ground, and his tooth popped right out of his mouth. Yeah. Okay, that's enough. He hit that guy so hard, he went down the ground, and his tooth popped out. All right, now we're going to stop right there. I'm going to give you a couple more scriptures, and we've got to go. I don't know what time it is. It's about time for the kids to get out. Um, let's look at, um, uh, let's see here. Let's look at, uh, let's see, Acts chapter 3 and verse 8. Acts chapter 3 and verse 8. And when we're going to go tonight, anyone has a comment, you, you're welcome to make it. We'll finish this two weeks from tonight, Lord willing. And all is to help you understand you worship within the guidelines of the Bible. You preach within the guidelines of the Bible. If we don't have a Bible, what do, what do we have? All we have is whatever you think and whatever I think. It is absolutely important, necessary, that we have a Bible that we go by. It's, 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 there, we don't have a right to exist as a church if the Bible's not right. If the Bible's not right, do whatever you want to. If the Bible is right, then go by it. And, and in Acts chapter 3, as I was saying, verse 8, and he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising It's just like if your son hits a home run, you go, yes, that's like that. Or, you know, if, uh, if y y your, your grandkid it makes a touchdown. You're obviously going to show emotion. There's God gave us our emotions, but it's all got the Holy Ghost. Uh, you're not going to convince me. The Holy Ghost tells a man to kick a woman in the face with a biker boot. You're just not going to convince me of that. I don't believe it. I don't know. I'm not saying he's demon possessed. I'm not saying that. That's between him and God. I am saying that is not Bible worship, and no preacher should be kicking people in the face and claim she fell out under the power of God. All right. Anybody want to say something right quick? Yes, ma'am. That's a very, very good question. And I thought of that a minute ago when I mentioned it. And, and Brother Derek's been talking about that in, in Sunday school uh, uh, about judging. And, and 
the truth is we all judge and you can't help it. And they all, the people quote that judge all the time. I think that verse is greatly took out of context. You want to explain that to a brother? You've been teaching it. Yeah. And, and, and we don't, we don't, we don't uh, like, uh, I think, I think where the wrong kind of judging is like if, if somebody's out of church, we'll say, Oh, I bet they're out wrong. I mean, you know, that kind of judging, we shouldn't do that. But judging what is right and judging what is scriptural, we, he that is spiritual, what, you, I'm sure you use that verse, judgeth all things. I forgot, I don't know exactly where that's at. Uh, he that is spiritual judgeth all things, and we shall judge angels. So the right kind of, you judge all the time. You judge all the, everybody does. There ain't a person in the world don't judge. The, everybody does. They, uh, if you walk in this church, you judge it. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. and, and that's normal. It's okay. But the Lord, what are you saying? There was a hypocritical, self-righteous kind of a judge. And he said, you'll know them by their fruits. Like all the preachers say, you know, we're not, we're not a judge. We're a fruit inspector. <laughs> if, if I see a tree and it's got apples hanging all over it, I'm not judged when I say, well, there's apple tree. Uh, that's right. Can't judge motives. I, I can't say these people ain't sincere because I don't know. I'm sure probably most of them are. You know who I feel sorry for? All them kids and stuff going up. Like, My goodness. Good night. That's a, that's, that's a carnival. That's a circus. That's a circus. Yeah, yeah, I knew about that. I, I, I'm not. I don't want to judge his personal life, but I was just saying his, his, pre, his preaching's enough to knock him out. Anybody else? Right, quick. Coach. Yeah. Yeah, ain't that something? It's by thousands. I mean, by the tens of thousands. And you know what that is? It's your experience over the book. When somebody says, I had an experience. I went there and I know what happened to me and I don't care what y'all say. And then you just get further and further and further and further out there in the la-la land. Anybody else? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All them people like that usually. Yeah. Yeah, they... You ought to have a... I'll do a lesson on that sometime, Brother Derek. All, this, all these people now that are calling Jesus Yeshua, you know, that's the fad nowadays. It's just Yeshua. Yeah, I mean, y'all heard that? It's on all the preachers, and they think they, they sound real cool and spiritual. That ain't his name. His name's Jesus. His name is Jesus. And he shall save his people from their sin. We'll talk about that another time. But let's all stand. And I uh, uh, hope everybody has a great, uh, great weekend. If you're not signed up for winter camp, here's the, here's the uh, list. And um, I want you to uh, go praying. I want you to be here Sunday morning for Sunday school, 10 o'clock sharp, and bring somebody with you, okay? Amen. Fellowship before you go, let's bow our head, and uh, we'll be dismissed. And uh, fellowship before we go. Aunt, why don't you dismiss us?